Hey everybody! Welcome to Let's Look at Block Apostrophe Hood. I'm just gonna call it Block Hood. This is a minimalistic city builder slash strategy slash puzzle slash uh... I mean I hesitate to say this word but I mean it in the best way possible. Casual game. It's not really casual in the same sense as like, you know, a, a mobile match 3 game or something like that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But it's it's meditative and the failure conditions are a little looser. And calling it a city builder even isn't really fair. But you'll see that as we get in here. It's more of a, a neighborhood builder. A space builder, if you will. This is um, published by Devolver Digital, made by the Plethora Project. Ten bucks on Steam. I'm reviewing it with a uh, review code that I received from the publisher and their PR department. I've actually played like three hours of this so far. And I think it's actually fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, most of the time when I do my due diligence for a game, I give it an hour or so. This was a little bit more complicated. Uh, it took me a while to wrap my head around it, but even as I was learning the game, I was like, this is this is really good. And I have to stress that from a visual design and aesthetics department, from a UI design uh, standpoint, it's just fantastic in that regard. Like, it's very pleasing visually and, and from an audio standpoint as well. Let's start with, um, we'll do some really early challenges in the game. Because the game, it, it has a sandbox mode. It is in alpha right now. It's on Steam Early Access. So, um, there's not really a campaign mode, so to speak. But there's self-contained challenges. There's a tutorial system that works well. But the challenges also do a really good job of kind of limiting what's available to you. So you can actually learn how the systems of the game interact with one another. And then you can go to the sandbox mode. And that's basically where you're going to be building you know, a city or a neighborhood that at least adheres to the principles that you want, because it's really self-directed. Do you want to make a neighborhood that is self-sustaining? Do you want to make a neighborhood that has no pollution? Do you just want to make a neighborhood that looks beautiful? Do you want to make a neighborhood that has, you know, it produces a lot of knowledge or industry or something like that? You know, it's the world is your oyster here. So this is our first challenge. In this level, you will need to achieve a goal condition to succeed. See the resources you need to go to the next level. Water is an essential resource of any community. Water can be collected from the ground, rivers, or rain, but often needs to be transported long distances to be used. Let's, let's explore the economy of water. Obtain 250 water. So I'm just going to pop open this uh, analysis window over here. Um, and basically what this is going to tell us is what our resources look like. Right now we start with 20 money. We have to get 250 water as you can see up here. There's other visualizations that we can use and we will use those as we go uh, throughout the game. But I'm going to start just by kind of talking about the actual um, interface. Uh, what you're kind of getting when you look at block hood here. This is your space. There is kind of a day-night cycle. Though I don't think it affects things like, you know, solar panels. I think it's just aesthetic. Um, on this 5x5 five five grid, which we can space to our own desire, you know, width and height-wise in um, sandbox mode and in other challenges it'll be larger, we are going to build a community. And our community goal here is to build uh, devices that will give us 250 water. So if we go to production here, we'll see a series of blocks. And as you can see, there's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 4, 24 production blocks, which can be kind of overwhelming, which is why I actually quite like the challenge mode of the game. It keeps it very simple. Uh, and you can see what you have here and uh, and how that we're going to use that pr to produce our goal I should say so we have an algae farm it takes gray water and produces algae and water we also have a water tower which takes money and produces water we have solar panels that produce electricity for free and we have windmills that take money but produce more electricity so already we can see like okay we could just plop down like a water tower and then our money is going to go down at um, Five, uh, uh, 0.05 per second, so every 10 seconds we're going to lose 0.5 money, and every 10 seconds our water is going to go up by 5. So we can tell that we're going to run out of, uh, of money, I think if you run the math on this one, a lot faster than we will actually get to 250 water, so that's not going to work for us. Okay, so now we need a way to generate more money. Well, what generates money for us? A retail shop. So a retail shop generates money, requires electricity, and consumers. Okay, so we need electricity. We can do that pretty easily just by throwing down a solar panel here. Uh, I like how it has almost like a Hitman Go sort of tabletop kind of tactile feel to it when you put this stuff down. But the, the real principle of the game, I'm going to pause it while I talk because it is running in real time, is verticality. Unlike a, a lot of city builders where you're mostly dealing with a flat grid that uh, raises as it gets more developed, you're actually developing kind of a vertical system here, which is really cool. And we'll see that more when I look at Sandbox and when I look at some of the later challenges that I'm on as well. Um, so now we're generating electricity, we're generating water, we still don't have money. Because we need labor in order to get a retail shop active. So I'm going to build a corridor here. These cost money to maintain. Um, but 
We need to have them in order to give people access to places. These things don't need access. They'll just produce uh, water and electricity by themselves. But if we want someone to live somewhere, we're going to need to actually allow them to uh, be able to get there. So we're going to throw down a small apartment. A small apartment takes fresh air, electricity, and water, and leisure, but creates a lot of labor, gray water, organic waste, and consumers. We need consumers to make money, so we'll throw down a retail shop uh, on the other side here. And you'll notice we can just uh, look at our screen here and see things are not going particularly well in a couple of departments. So electricity is becoming an urgent issue. Let's throw down some more electricity. Money is now going up thanks to our retail shop. Leisure is going down. We're not generating enough consumers and we're not generating enough fresh air. So if we're not generating enough consumers, let's quickly throw down another um, small apartment. And there actually is synergy between different uh, buildings. So sometimes you have to rotate it a little bit to get it in the right spot here. But you'll see that there's a blue arrow that comes up next to those. You know, it's like a sense of community. These people, they live next to each other. And as a result, they're more productive. We're still not producing enough consumers. So we'll put down another uh, building here. And now we're producing more consumers than we're using, which is good. But it's close to being in, in um, equilibrium. We'll also throw down some trees, which take water, but produce fresh air and leisure, which are two things that we're a little bit... Uh, in, in the dark with right now. So one tree will give us 10. Two trees will give us 11. Well, not 11, but 0 0.11. You know what I mean? Because there's synergy here again. And um, that should take us up there. There you go. So now we've almost created a, a little bit of a self-sustaining economy here. We'll throw down one more. Um... I don't really want this like that, I guess. We'll throw down one more solar panel. These have a little synergy as well. We're in equilibrium when it comes to our electricity. We're making some of everything else. Now, unfortunately, we're making some gray water, so we could do something about that. Like, we could produce more water by just throwing down an algae collector. And this will take our gray water, which is now going to go down, and will produce uh, more water for us. So we're actually producing quite a lot of it. And this, I just want to check our access data for a second, which I'll talk about in the future. But the visualizations are really handy here. Um, this is is kind of the crux of Blockhood and, and what makes it an engaging puzzle experience as well as a cool sandbox kind of city builder simulation is that you get this goal. You're like, okay, I need to build water. But it's not just as simple as building water. You need to kind of run back through the production cycle. In order to produce water, I need money. Or in this case, I need gray water. In order to produce gray water, I need people. In order for people to move here, there needs to be electricity. There also needs to be fresh air. There needs to be leisure. Like, they need to have a reason to move here. So you, you really need to distill it down to brass tacks in order to figure out uh, what, what you need to actually succeed on a mission, which is, or on a challenge, which is really cool. And I really like this um, display here, this analysis tab. You can kind of toggle it uh, with the K key to be uh, general trends or to be the actual amount of resources here. I like seeing the amount of resources here um, so that we can kind of see what we need. We would like to make water a little bit faster so we're not sitting here forever. Um, but we're not really... We're, we're kind of rich in labor, but that's about it right now. So if we wanted to make more water, um, I think one step that we could take to accomplish that would be to try to grow our city a little bit. So let's create a, a large apartment. This is going to be very small, by the way, because we're just getting started here. Let's create a large apartment, which will create more gray water. Now, in order to have people still want to move in, we should put down another tree. And that will make our fresh air basically hit equilibrium. But we're going to bet, actually, you know what, I'm going to delete that tree. Easy enough. Just hit the three key and we'll come back here and... You don't spend money to put buildings down, which is a real uh, difference from most city builders. And it actually works out really well here because you have the ability to... Uh, kind of tweak things on the fly and not feel like money stopping you from doing it. Money is something that comes in. It's more about sustainability than it is about growth, honestly. And I, I'm not saying the game is political with respect to that, but it's nice to have a game that is a little bit more focused on um, keeping a community in equilibrium and promoting the positive elements of that instead of just, um, hey, my city's got a population of 8 million, I'm the best player. Which, again, it, you know, different strokes for different folks, but it's nice that there's a, a flip side of the coin that's being examined here as well. Um, so now we have a little bit more gray water. So again, we'll, we'll put down a, uh, an algal collector. This should cause our water production to go up, but gray water is going down. So again, we, you know, we, you can probably see the cycle that we're catching ourselves in here. We'll throw down another uh, small apartment. And this small apartment means we need to throw down a tree. You don't need to, but we should. Um, and now we're making 0.75 water. We are running out of electricity, though. Um, this is probably not the ideal way to do this, but I'll tell you what. How's our money doing? Not great. Um, but we have a ton of labor. We have a decent amount of labor and a decent amount of consumers. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to... Oh, wait. Have I, have I actually screwed this up? 
No, it's just not really being used that effectively. We're not making that much gray water. Okay. Tell you what, throw down a retail shop. Try to sneak it in there. This will cause us to make a little bit more money. And then because we're making more money, why don't we just go with the building that turns money into water. The water tower. Right there. So it's cool that it's also sandboxy and that you have a variety of different ways to accomplish your objectives here. Um, because I don't care about the long-term health of my community, I'm going to bulldoze a tree and put in a solar panel. But it's not that bad when you say it that way, right? Um, but this is going to cause people to move out because they're not going to be super stoked about the lack of fresh air. But at the same time, we're producing a lot of water here and this mission will complete. One little source subject for me is um, there doesn't appear to be a... Uh, a way to speed up the game, if that makes sense. You can slice up, so you could. This is very important for building vertical cities, uh, and you can also, uh, you know, tilt slide. Because I know people are going to be like, "Hey, what's uh, what are these ones right here?" But there doesn't appear to be a way to actually speed up the game. So here, I know that we're basically at a certain level of equilibrium. By the way, I could put trees on top of these buildings and just generate more fresh air if I wanted to as well. Um, but it is going to cost me water to generate that fresh air, so maybe I shouldn't have done it. But anyway, um, once you've got a, a society that is basically at an equilibrium here, I kind of feel like I should be able to just hit the next arrow and have it run in like 10 times speed and then finish the challenge more easily. But the game does run uh, if you keep it all tabbed, so uh, you, you can, once you have a system like this, you can all tab and finish it off. But uh, I kind of wish it was a little stickier in the sense that it just let you uh, do it yourself. So we're going to go back to the main menu here. That's an example of an early challenge that I wanted to show off just to kind of give you a feel for what's going on in Block Hood. And then let's check out a, a challenge that gets a little later here. Right, before we do that, why don't we frame it um, with respect to what's in the game right now. It's relatively cheap for a game of this scope at 10 bucks on Steam and uh, it's priced uh, well, I think. I, I think it's more robust than its price point would normally suggest, if that makes sense. You get 10 tutorials. These take like a minute each and are actually... Uh, pretty important in order to understand even how to do the basic tutorials. Uh, so I definitely, if you get it, recommend going through these. This will take you under half an hour, probably. And then the sandbox mode allows you to kind of basically do whatever you want uh, with your own city. Uh, and you can make the terrain, you know, as high as you possibly want and, you know, width and height, of, or width, width and depth as well, of course. And this is just a, a product of that, I suppose. And um, then you got 12 challenges as well. So the sandbox mode is really where the long-term kind of sustainable gameplay is going to come from. But the challenges actually get quite difficult. And it's taken me about uh, an hour and a half to two hours to just finish the first seven. The first few, like the really easy ones, uh, are not that challenging. But once you get into like... Um, like, we'll do seven here, which teaches us about vertical farming and is important. But uh, you can see the objective for number one, obtain 250 units of water. For number five, produce 1,000 units of electricity with less than 1,000 units of sickness. Produce 500 units of beer and 1,000 units of money with less than 100 units of wheat. The game gets very complex with systems here. You start, you're like, okay, water, electricity, gray water, labor, um, fresh air, leisure. Once we get to the point where we're actually building our own environment, it does a good job of kind of adding stuff on in a modular fashion so that it's not super overwhelming. But let me put it this way. Let's walk backwards. In order to produce beer, we need to be able to uh, build a brewery. A brewery takes in wheat and produces beer and organic waste and maybe something else. Uh, we need to have a bar or a beer garden to do something with that beer. Uh, so we can sell it and generate money for us. We need to have a wheat field in order to generate wheat. The wheat is going to, or the wheat fields are going to require water and labor in order to have water. We've already seen that. In order to have labor, we have to have small apartments so that people have a place to live. In order to have small apartments, you need to have fresh air, you need to have water, you need to have electricity, you need to have leisure. So really, like when it says produce 500 units of beer and 1,000 units of money, it's not as easy as just saying, well, we'll build some breweries. You really have to build a community that, that can sustain itself and kind of slowly get you towards that goal. And that's why these challenges end up taking, you know, upwards of 10 to 45 minutes each. Uh, because you have to you have to kind of wait for them to happen, but it really hits its stride once you start building these vertical cities And the cities just look beautiful once you start building them or the neighborhoods I'm using city as kind of a shorthand here. So let's get this analysis tab open um, We got 150 money. We need to produce 500 beer again in order to produce beer. We are going to need um, Wheat in order to produce wheat. We're gonna need water and Labor and electricity 
which also requires fresh air. So let's start just by doing things in the most basic way. We will build a uh, an electrical area over here. By the way, we get introduced to new stuff. So the anaerobic digester takes the organic waste from the brewery, makes biogas and fertilizer. You know what this game reminds me of a little bit as well? And it's not a strict one-to-one -one comparison, but if you like playing Factorio and kind of working through that uh, supply chain, this is going to tickle the same boat for you. This And it, the same thing if you like uh, Infinifactory or... Um, Space Cam, it's not quite the same, but it's a little similar in the sense that it's very analytical and cerebral uh, in terms of the, the the way that you work through the game. And even if you like, uh, like Offworld Trading Company, I think has a similar bend here, although it's less of a real-time strategy game with victory conditions, obviously. So, first things first, we need electricity. So let's just start by building um, some solar panels here. And we're just going to make this like our solar panel area and eventually we might replace this with something like the biogas generator which uses biogas to make electricity but a little bit of pollution and we get to make uh, biogas from there's there's something we can use that makes biogas I can't remember um, for now though we'll just start we got a little bit of electricity we know we're gonna need water um, so we'll, we'll put down a water tower. As soon as we put down the water tower, it's going to start to cost us money. So we should get on the move now. But obviously we're in a nice little equilibrium now. Let's start planning the place that we want to um, have, our, have our people live. So I'm just going to build out this. And these are structured corridors as opposed to regular corridors. They're more expensive, but the support beams allow you to build on top of them. And then I'm going to put down an elevator. And we're going to kind of scroll up a little bit. Sometimes this can be a little in, uh, finicky in the interface. Uh, and by using this elevator, we can build on a second level here. And we'll just start with two levels for now. The, the elevators have to connect to one another. And this is all important so that the people have access to where they're going. Um, so we know we need water and fresh air for people to want to live in our, um, in our area here. So let's, uh, let's just start by building like a reasonably not that dense patch of trees uh, and th this will provide us with the again sometimes a little a little touchy um, this will provide us with the fresh air necessary now don't build it there this will provide us with the fresh air necessary in order to um, convince people that they should move in and we are losing a decent amount of money but it, that'll come in time so now that we've done that we know we need labor to make wheat fields so we're going to start with some small apartments that produce labor. Large apartments produce youth instead of labor. Which is, again, uh, actually a really nice segue into uh, explaining that I really don't think that this game is meant to be realistic. It is realistic in the sense that, you know, I mean, we're learning about anaerobic digesters and stuff like that. That's really cool. But it's, it's unrealistic in the sense that... Um, I'm just going to put down some more elect electrical generators for us here quickly. It's unrealistic in the sense that, of course, you know, a large apartment could have a bunch of students living in it, or it could have a bunch of office workers living in it, but it's more of just an approximation of how, um, of how things go here. So we're losing money, we're losing water, and we're losing, uh, fresh air. So we do need to make a little bit more of a concerted effort to make that stuff, uh, happen for us in the future. But let's start, uh, with some wheat farms. So I'm actually going to put these wheat farms on top of the existing apartments. And this is going to seem a little ridiculous at first. We're not, we need fertilizer. Oh shit, okay, so one sec. We, in order to make fertilizer, we need to have the anaerobic digesters. So we'll put the anaerobic digesters down here just behind this place. So this is, let's look at it. We're making fertilizer, we're losing air, we're losing water. Oh, so the things are not looking great here, one sec. Let's go to access data. Production data is bad, access data is okay. Alright, so we need more fresh air. I'm thinking that the way I'm going to do that, it's going to look a little goofy here at first, but it, promise me, or I, I promise you, it'll work out in a minute here. Just get a tree going. Fresh air is looking all right now. We're running out of water. We actually can just throw down another water tower. There are, like, we don't have algae farm access in this one, unfortunately. But there you go. Throw down an, another water tower. We're losing a lot of money, but everything else is being produced in a timely fashion here, which is cool. All right. What else do we need? Well, fresh air is a little low. Labor's actually pretty good. Organic waste is a little low, so we could use more small apartments for that. Um, we're gonna need to make some breweries at some point. So wheat, water, and labor. Are we producing much wheat? No. We could throw down another wheat farm. But in throwing down this wheat farm, we are probably going to start using... Uh... No, actually, water's still pretty good. 
and labor is still pretty good, and we're producing a lot more wheat. But we could use more fertilizer. So, you know, this is where they really start to harp on the, the concept of, like, um, vertical farming. Like, this is a community. This is not just an apartment building. This is where, like, we're going to get our food. This is where we're going to live as, as a people. Are we making enough fertilizer? Looks like it, so let's put another wheat farm down here, or wheat field. And um, then we'll just put another tree, and we'll, we'll try to go for a nice tree here. One that produces a lot of fresh air. Now, unfortunately, because we built a level that's organic, we actually need to go two levels up, which is going to cost us a lot of money here, unfortunately. I may have screwed myself. Um, we're going to need to go two levels up in order to build something on top of that, I think. So let's get this lined up properly, um, and we'll build a structured corridor outwards. But what this really does is it leads to some dynamic-looking structures uh, without a doubt. So I want to see if we can build a, a small apartment on top of the wheat field. Oh, we totally can. Alright, are we producing beer yet? No, we need a brewery. So let's get a couple of small apartments up here, because we do need more organic waste. So let's get this set up there. Do we have good organic waste yet? Not yet. We need more electricity, but we've got a decent amount stocked up, so that's okay. Okay, maybe we'll do one more floor of apartments, and then a brewery floor, or maybe we'll just go straight to the brewery floor. Yeah, okay, we need, we need to go like that. We're producing a slight surplus of organic waste. Running out of water. Need some more fresh air. Desperately need some more money. So here's what I'm going to do very quickly. I tried to pause it there as if I was playing like a paradox game. Come up to the next floor. Throw down this. And then immediately throw down a brewery. Which is here. And we need it to be accessible like that, I think. Let me just, I think that's right, but let me just check access data. Yeah, people can get to it if that's in the blue, which is important. And then we're going to quickly throw down a bar right here. All right. Now we should be starting to almost be able to generate money. Just give it a minute here. The money is becoming a real sore spot. I built this maybe a little faster, feeling like I'm under pressure than I should have, but... Again, we don't need money to build buildings, we just need money to, to fund our operations here, but it kind of fulfills the same criteria, because if we don't get enough money, um, there's going to be a, a instability in our system, which is going to lead to uh, you know people leaving and then possibly the whole society declining here. Um, it's going to look a little messy here. I'm not much of a city planner. That's, that's Michael A.L. Fox's gig. Um, but we could, for example, just throw down like a water tower right next to this bar. And there we go. Now we're generating water. And and what else could we use up here? Well, we got we got a decent amount of money finally coming in. So let's go like that. And we could put some couple of trees up here. We could also just put grass and and that generates uh, leisure but not not fresh air unfortunately. So no, we'll go for trees. Okay, so some of this stuff when it turns red, that means it's decaying and and possibly not being used. And if something's not being used, it will eventually disappear. Now, uh, things decaying is not the end of the world, but it is an indication of perhaps a system that is uh, inefficiently designed. And what's the problem right now? Like, that's what I'm... If everything's accessible, why aren't you using it that much? Like, these trees being close to decay... I do, oh, they, they don't have enough water? We need, to, we need to produce more water quickly then. Okay. Um... This is fine. Do we have biogas? We do have biogas, so what I'm gonna actually do is... Break that electricity and then throw down a biogas generator. Takes in biogas and money, makes a lot of electricity, but also pollution. Okay, so then I'm going to take out another one of those solar panels and I'm going to throw down a water tower. There we go. Oh no, it's all coming down. You can see it, it's all coming down. We need to produce water a little faster than this. I think we've done it. I think we've gotten ourselves out of the worst of it. So yeah, I mean, it, the uh, equilibrium and, and sustainability, oh no, is definitely a, a an important theme in the game. What do you like? You lack water? I'm generating water! What do you want? What do you water from me? Here you go. Throw down another one. These do take money, so it's a little, uh... Oh! Oh, it's all starting to come down. Well, this is not really a good example of how I wanted my uh, society to look at this point. 
I've, I've bunged it up something fierce. What this will show you is that, uh, this ain't an easy game. Um, you, you can mess it up pretty easily and cause yourself some problems. I, I ran out of water quickly there, and look, all of a sudden we got ourselves this derelict ghost town here. Um, what I will do is maybe do another challenge, but let's also load into, uh, our sandbox here. I mean, it's a little embarrassing, but at the same time, it does illustrate what I'm trying to get at with the game, is that it's, it, although casual in some sense, and that it doesn't have a strict victory and loss condition, um, it, it's not necessarily an, an easy game. The music and the UI is just lovely, and it's very engaging to play from either a puzzle standpoint or from a more, um, you know, casual kind of sandboxy standpoint. So, this is, uh, this represents like 20 minutes of, of city building for me here. And in sandbox mode, it's a little intimidating because you have access to absolutely everything. So, you know, if you thought the last one was even semi-complicated, look at once you get down here, um, a tech factory specializes in the production of technology, produces money, requires technology. Well, how do we get technology? Well, that uh, happens here in the tech office. You would have got to put in data and then you get technology and money. Well, how do you get data? Well, that's obviously located in the... Um, See, even I don't know here. I, I actually don't. <laughs> it's somewhere up here, though. But we get access to, you know, beer gardens, cafes, bars, bakeries, hotels, which require tourism. Um, you know, if you go to our organic stage here, you can get uh, all sorts of different... Not And these are not just cosmetic, which is what I appreciate, pr appreciate about it. Um, these all have their own benefits uh, and, and differential benefits that are interesting. Like, for example, I've used a lot of plum trees here because they produce better fresh air than the the smaller trees do. It basically is a, a plum tree produces more fresh air and less leisure, uh, and a tree produces more leisure and less fresh air. Now I've also uh, got some interesting stuff going down here. Like I have a uh, a fish farm. Let me just. I've got a fish farm here, which uh, takes in water and organic waste from the people and produces fish, gray water, and fertilizer. And then I have, of course, some anaerobic digesters that take. Uh, more organic waste. Wait, where's the... Um, I'm looking for something that takes gray water. Is it... Uh, we must have a ton of... Yeah, we got a ridiculous amount of gray water. Okay, what takes gray water here? It was the brewery? It's the al... Yeah, okay, there we go. It's the algae farm. Alright, let's throw down another one of those. Right there. Um, and that should... Like, we got way too much gray water here. Tons of organic waste, actually, as well. We got vegetables. We got consumers. Etc, etc. But what I'm really... Uh, not even proud of necessarily, but what I'm excited about in the game is this concept of like vertical farming that no other city builder really does. Like, I am basically building a skyscraper of crops here, and it's probably built fairly inefficiently because that's the kind of person I am. But uh, essentially, by just building one floor on top of itself over and over here, we can make. Um, Increasingly kind of interesting and complex farms. So I mean I have wheat fields down here uh, right now But we could also have like hydroponic farms these take water and fertilizer make vegetables and gray water Do we need more vegetables? Not really what else do we make recycling plant takes sorted waste? We don't have a waste sorter yet. We don't want to put our landfill up there probably takes algae and makes um, Electricity and fertilizer. Well, we got a decent amount of algae. We might want to consider that, but I kind of like the concept of just building this up as like our primary, uh, like breadbasket for the industry here. Water, labor, and fertilizer, and makes vegetables. How are we doing for fertilizer? I mean, really good. You know what we're not making a lot of right now is beer. Do we have good water production? Decent. We could use more wheat, actually, hilariously enough. So let's, um, throw down some more wheat fields up here. And I know that this is unrealistic from a, uh, a design standpoint. I mean, how does this thing stay, uh, stay afloat here? There actually is a, uh, a property in the game related to structural, in structural integrity. We need to build another small apartment here to keep our, our society in equilibrium. Because we need more labor to man the production here. Good. Yeah, we're back in equilibrium here. A little bit of pollution, but we can put down some bamboo for us to get rid of that. Um, yeah, okay, everything's going fine here. Um, if I go to one of these properties, data visualization, I think, structured data. You can see how the structure is holding. Blue means good structure, white is weak. I can only assume that that means that um, there is uh, the possibility for this stuff to fall down in the future. I'm not sure if it's in this update. Similarly, you know, land value. This is something that all kind of city builder games seem to have um, 
I don't know if this functionality is fully implemented to have consequences, like, you know, people will move out or they'll want to move up higher into the high rise as they get more income or something. Um, and I don't know if the physics is in it yet, and I don't know if biodiversity necessarily means anything yet. Uh, although I know that there was recently an update that allows animals to come live in your, uh, in your space, which is really cool. I'm just going to play the sandbox for a little bit and, and have a good time here, because honestly, I really like the game, and I think... Uh, for early access, there's more than enough content here to recommend, but also, it's a, uh, it, it's just really kind of pleasant to play. And I, I mean, pleasant is not a word that gets necessarily thrown around all that much in, um, in the, the games industry, but it's, it's very pleasing. <laughs> it's very nice to, to spend time in this game, and it's not, it's not absurdly punishing, despite the fact that I have said it's difficult. Uh, it, it's really most of the time just kind of like, you know, you can you can build a city according to... Oh, I don't mean that. I didn't mean for that to be there. You can build a city according to your own, um, your own requirements for success. Do you want, uh, you know, the largest city that you can get or the largest neighborhood you can get? You can do that here. Do you want to build a, a city that grows as large as possible but has literally zero pollution? You can do that as well. Um, you know what's something I didn't check on, actually? Can we, pr can we put wheat fields next to other wheat fields here and make this building... These buildings, I should say, perhaps look a little bit less silly? Because right now, we are, like, completely ignoring synergy. And what's nice is that this also leads to uh, very visually dynamic-looking cities, without a doubt. Like... The fact that you can build these skyscrapers that basically exclusively consist of wheat fields is is really cool. Um, unfortunately, I can't bulldoze that brewery because I gotta bulldoze the one on top of it first because apparently it's it's holding it up. But um, that's that's fair. And I think this is a concept that is that is not really explored in in many games. And I, I think it's really cool that that this game is is taking it upon itself to do that. Um, so we've we've created like a lot more wheat fields here. We're producing a ton of wheat, but we're going to need to put some breweries down somewhere, but they are going to compromise the integrity of these wheat fields. But how much... Yeah, we're producing very little beer. Give it a sec here. I'm going to loop around the other side and then make another brewery. It, another game that this uh, probably fairly obviously reminds me of is Banished in the sense that it's kind of like... It's not minimalistic necessarily, but it's kind of a smaller city builder, and, and I really like that. It, it, it's a little bit more my speed as someone who's not always, you know, the most min maxy person in the world here. Okay, so now we're making a decent chunk of beer. We need more fertilizer in order to handle this... Uh, in order to handle this beer properly. Speaking of which, we can make a bee farm. Not even worry about the beer. Um, but let's um, let's just put some anaerobic digesters up here. I mean, this part of the town might smell a little bit, but that's okay. And there's a genuine uh, satisfaction, and I mean this sincerely, overseeing all of your numbers in the green, or all of your numbers at equilibrium with one another. It's really, you're like, this is a system that works, and there's something satisfying about being able to alt-tab and come back in an hour and be like, everybody's still living their lives here and, and, and enjoying it, and that's really cool. Um, we could even put, like, an algae farm up here because we're running low on water, and that has really helped out. But we need some more labor, and then that's it, basically. If, if we are able to get a little bit more labor, uh, we'll probably need to build a little bit more electricity here because we're at equilibrium right now, and small apartments are going to take uh, electricity, of course, to function. Everything affects everything else in this game, and I think that's what's really cool. This is not where we want that. Now, in, in terms of quirks, um, you've probably seen some over the course of this video. The interface, although fantastic, it sometimes is a little confusing and, and finicky to place down the building in the uh, exact area that you would like to. And uh, it, it can take a few tries to get it to snap into the area that's that's exactly where you want it to be. But honestly, uh, although those are not necessarily simply quality of life uh, issues, it's a game that is uh, is great enough and, and enjoyable enough that I think it it pretty much uh, it, it comes out in the wash in the wash. I guess is what I'm trying to say here. We just need a little bit more power. Um, what am I using for power and? Here, there's like, a, I mean, we could use the gas generator. Are we doing fine on biogas? It does produce a little pollution, which I'd prefer to avoid, but, uh... Are we doing fine on money? Oh, we're doing great on money. So if we just put down, like, a wind turbine down here or something... If we put down two wind turbines down here or something... The game, um, we should... Look, these people are gonna live here. We at least want it to look, uh... 
fairly nice. There you go. Producing a very small amount of pollution. I'm thinking maybe we'll just go grab one more piece of bamboo, which, which eats pollution, and, and throw it down there. And there you go. Um, this is this is uh, representative of maybe 45 minutes of, of building a city in block hood. It's really cool. And some of the stuff that you can see that the community has made, where the buildings get like super tall, the communities get super tall, but they're self-sustaining, is really satisfying to look at. From a visual design standpoint, the game is, is seriously on point. But uh, I really like it. I, I think uh, it's one of the best strategy slash city building games I've played in a long time. Scratch is a different itch than something like City Skylines, but it is really interesting. It's kind of more of a minimalistic, self-contained experience that even is a little bit puzzly with respect to the challenges. I, it comes highly recommended for me personally, and the fact that it's it's relatively cheap is another plus in its uh, category right there, but um, or in, in its wheelhouse right there. Let's make sure we save that in case I want to come back later. But um, things I'd like to see in the future, it would be nice, I mean, if there were more challenges, and if the challenges were kind of like... I guess if there were more challenges and the challenges were broader in the sense that there were more easy ones and there were more intermediate ones and there were more difficult ones. Uh, 12 is a little light. That's still a lot of gameplay, especially considering I fail, you know, a third of them at least once. But uh, for me personally, I, I am a little bit more goal-oriented than a sandbox type player for the most part. So I would like to see more challenges in a kind of uh, more incrementally difficult campaign, I guess, to work myself through. But uh, as is right now, it's it's really well done, and I hope you guys have enjoyed watching it. If you want to check it out, there will be a link in the video description below to pick it up on Steam. But for now, if you enjoyed the episode, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. I'll see you guys next time, and thanks for watching.